the best 007 after watching 27 James Bond films back to back to back to back to back multiple in some days. I feel as though I have a decent judge of who the best is and, and you get different sample sizes for a lot of these guys. But I definitely know who my favorites are and I know who my least favorites are. We're going to start at the top with my most favorite. I would basically characterize Daniel Craig. The name's Bond. James Bond. As steely, cold, brutal, and very different. He's kind of like not even a hybrid, just an evolution of James Bond from all the previous actors where they were a lot more suave, a lot cleaner in their combat. But he was he was very brutal and kind of seemed like a killing machine in some ways. And actually, I think captures the imagination a little bit better as, as like what a a secret intelligence spy would be like, like someone who could just kill someone on a moment's notice, but also very capable in a lot of other situations. And I enjoyed his movies the most. Quantum of Solace is really the only one that it diverts from the rest of the pack, but all of his other films are are easily in my top favorites. So that has a huge impact as well. My second favorite is before we get there, I would like to ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. I love making videos like this and I have a lot of cool videos planned for the future. So please subscribe, like this video, and comment your favorite 007 down below. My second favorite 007 is Sean Connery. Mr. Bond. James Bond. He's the OG, which I think does give him a lot of points, but he also hits high notes that, well, quite frankly, only Daniel Craig hits. And I'm talking about Goldfinger. Um, it's, you know, another masterpiece for this series and a lot of other films were great. In my opinion, Goldfinger is the highest non Daniel Craig, James Bond, Dr. No's so good. Never say never again is really good. In my opinion, too. Uh, a lot of people like Thunderball. I mean, he also has a ruggedness to him that is very distinct actually from a lot of the other actors i mean he has the suaveness he's very believable from that and i think some are more elegant than him but he's definitely more rugged and believable in physical situations i, I think you can see the way i'm leaning with my bonds i kind of like them to to feel like a a badass as opposed to a gentleman but connery is the hybrid uh, where he pulls off both quite well. My third favorite Bond is Roger Moore. My name's Bond. James Bond. And I, I think villains kind of, you know, they say styles make the fight. Well, villains kind of make Roger Moore. Plus his run was, was really, really solid. I mean, all of his films were really enjoyable. But his films with Jaws, Moonraker, and The Spy Who Loved Me were really, really good. So, like, average movie rating, Roger Moore is pretty solidly third, taking into account his large sample size. Because we're, there's going to be another guy on this list that is average better, but there's only one film. Uh, anywho... He seems a lot more gentlemanly. He seems a lot more suave. He seems strictly like a guy who can kind of talk his ways in and out of situations. He seems very calm, cool, and collected, but nowhere near the ass kicker that Daniel Craig or Sean Connery is. He doesn't seem nearly as rugged as them or even another guy that is going to be on this list. But... I enjoyed his movies for sure, and I really liked him as Bond as well. The next Bond that I have in my ratings is George Lazenby. My name's Bond. James Bond. I mean, he his one and done was really good. 
uh, On Her Majesty's Secret Service was one of the most impactful movies outside of the last Bond movie. And I think they really could have done something special with that. And the fact that they didn't is... I, I mean, just being straight honest, it was very disappointing, but it does not diminish that movie itself. Lazenby was also very much... It, he seemed more like a spy, uh, which sounds dumb, but he was working undercover, and he had to pretend to be a different guy, which seems more in line with what you would expect from a spy, I think, at least in my mind. So I, I kind of liked that it felt more grounded just from that very thing. Um, but Lazenby was really good. The next Bond that I have is Timothy Dalton. Who are you? Bond, James Bond. Dalton Bond movies kind of have an edge to them, quite frankly. And he seems more like a wild man. As far as performances go, Dalton, he really earned his stripes. I just don't have his films nearly as highly rated as Roger Moore or George Lazenby's only one, but I, I I have him solidly ahead of our last, like, serious candidate because of that edge, quite frankly. And uh, those films are definitely unique and distinct, and they feel like they're catered towards this new Bond in which Timothy Dalton is playing. I really appreciated that. And the last serious Bond is Pierce Brosnan. My name's Bond. James Bond. And he is just quite frankly a victim of bad scripts. The direction that they decided to take Bond in the early 2000s and late 90s was just... It, it just didn't work for me, or at least through a historical lens where the Roger Moore and Sean Connery Bond films aged really well. And like, especially even Connery's films, I, like I think Goldfinger aged like fine wine. That movie still holds up and is one of my favorite Bonds. Brosnan's did not. Uh, Goldeneye was good, but, you know, the end of Brosnan's run was just so, so bad. They 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 did some silly stuff with Bond. I, I do want to say, though, I feel none of this is is Brosnan's fault. I actually thought performance wise, he was really good and really believable. And coming in, I thought he was going to suck. And I thought that's why the movie was going to suck. He was in some instances the only good thing about the Bond films. So. It sucks to have to rate him this low or rank him this low, but I feel there's really no other way to go about it. And But he's not last because that award goes to David Niven. My dear boy, my dear M. I want to know, did anyone like Casino Royale, honestly? I, maybe it's just more of a, like a UK sense of humor and that's why it didn't really uh, work with me I wanted to like the film especially because as you're watching through the Bond films I was like alright this will kind of break up you know I think it's like number 5 in chronological order at by, going by release date so I was like okay you know I've seen 4 Bond films this will kind of break it up and it'll be like a nice change of pace but I was actually so into it that you know I, I, I didn't need a change of pace and it was just like oh man like they, they really you're using the Bond name and it doesn't really do it any justice uh, this movie's just wasn't for me and Niven's performance is like you know not anything very memorable uh, Peter Sellers, I think, is actually better, but I like Peter Sellers a lot, and I think maybe the more I watch David Niven, I'll probably appreciate him a lot, too, but um, that's my Bond rating. Let me know yours down below. I think 
when you started watching Bond is probably who your favorite's going to be and or maybe your generation's Bond. Maybe that's why I like Craig the most, Daniel Craig. I mean, I, I just literally watched every single Bond movie for the first time like last month. So, um, but I'm a, I'm a Daniel Craig kind of generation guy because I was too young to watch Brosnan and Craig was right in uh, the time that I would start watching it. But uh, like from people I've talked to, it's kind of like your generation's guy sometimes ends up being your favorite. Let me know that too. Is it like, Hey, I grew up watching Connery and I, and he's my favorite or, you know, Roger Moore was the bond right around the time I started to go to the theaters. Let me know that. Cause I do think, I think that has a huge impact on who your favorite is. Uh, but anyways, Y'all are the best, and I will catch you all on the flippity-floop. Bye, y'all.